got it. Oh my. Wow. <clears throat> Great. Oh. Oh. This is annoying. We no sound. We're muted. Oh dear, no, I'm just going to get out of this. <clears throat> Gee, so what's happening? I have no idea. Um, mm. share screen, okay. It is a share screen. Hi everyone, good evening. We're going to go ahead and get started. So um, just as a bit of housekeeping, we're going to go ahead and mute everyone um, just so we can have some clarity here and, and, and get this party started. Uh, my name is Calabria Webb. I am the Director of Education and Outreach here at Opera Next Gen. And before I go any further, I think we can all just give it a hand clap to cast and crew for a wonderful performance. I know I was just impressed. Thank you all so much. Thank you for everyone's collective vision, um, for everyone's work, everyone's um, drive. And, and of course, especially during this time, um, your love for the art. That's that's just, you know, paramount here. Um, I'm, I'm super excited to just jump in. And I want to open up a lot of questions to the entire cast, um, the entire crew in no particular order. And give us Singers, give us a little bit of your experience. Like, what was your experience putting this whole opera together from top to bottom um, in terms of your role preparation, in terms of collaboration through the camera? Like, I'm I'm super curious to know, and I'm sure others are as well. Um, I guess I can start it off. Um, <laughs> Well, I, I can say for me that this was probably one of the most challenging things I have done. Um, and for me, I feel like I discover a new challenging mm -hmm. thing every few months, the most challenging Powell, thing, but this Bottom. is taking the icing on the cake. Um, there's just this different level of preparation that goes into this when you are essentially by yourself. So you can't really, you know, you get so used to and comfortable with being able to see the conductor or like feel your castmates when they take their breath or just little things that you just take for granted we didn't have mm -hmm. here. Um, so it really took prepping. Like I really had to really listen to what was happening in the piano and like really, really get in touch with what was happening because I didn't have too much to um, lean on outside of my own understanding. So it was one of the most challenging um, things I've done thus far. Rewarding though. Let me not leave that. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll second that. Um, I will say it's one of the the most challenging projects I've ever done. Um, but I find it truly rewarding. Um, and also, it's very funny because none of us as cast members have met each other in person. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to bond very quickly with a group of people over Skype has been very interesting. But I've been so thankful because everyone has been super flexible. And we have a whole team, a whole tech team behind us that's truly supportive. But with this project, we have to be our own stage managers, our own tech team, our own production team sometimes because we have to set up everything ourselves. So it's it's been a very creative and fun project that has pushed me beyond my own limits. And I'm, I'm actually really proud of myself for it. Yeah. I will also say the same thing. Yeah, I definitely, I've gotten to interpret this role twice. This is my second time as Uncle Mac. And um, to actually 
be completely apart from everybody and get that energy from people across a screen. I mean, it's literally me alone in my apartment in New York City, you know, and trying to, you know, pick up on what everyone is saying, getting notes from Chicago, get like <laughs> literally getting notes from Chicago at this moment, you know, hearing Conchetta sing from there, hearing our music director from there, you know, hearing my other castmates, some in New York, others even further, completely further west. I just, it has, it has been the most challenging in that way because what we do, I do opera and, and, and do storytelling for human connection. Um, and so to have to kind of filter that through a lens and hopefully, you know, that was able to show that we were able to all love and lean into that. But it was it was difficult. It was it was very difficult, but and also made me appreciate my tech people and my life even far more because I, it's not my blessing. It's not my calling. And I'm so thankful for all of those all of the hours and stuff that went in to actually make us look good. Yeah, and while it was challenging, as William said, to uh, you know not have the conductor out in front, not have Donald out in front, it was pretty cool to have Maestro in your ear. You know, we had another track that the audience couldn't hear, um, and Donald was you know counting the whole time through and cueing us and giving us words of encouragement, and uh, that was pretty comforting. Thank you, Maestro. Backstage secrets. <laughs> I'm supposed to know that that's happening. <laughs> I agree with everything that's been said. It was super challenging. Uh, shout out to the tech team. They're amazing. And to our little microphones, since you all hopefully have gotten to hear opera singers live in a room, these poor little mics, we blew them out for weeks. It took us two weeks to figure out how to not blow these mics out every single time we'd open our mouths. So hooray, tech team, we did it. I um I actually have to backtrack a little bit here and I and I have to apologize. I jumped in straight out of the gate and was like, wow, we're here. And and just from excitement, um, I neglected to introduce the cast. So I'm gonna just take a second and bring it back and show my my manners here. Um, I would like to introduce and wave um in the role of Conchetta, we have Olivia Johnson as Hello. Uncle Mac, David Morgan Sanchez. Hi, Uncle Wesley, William Powell the third. Gas station attendant, Eric Bagger, police officer, Michael Coleman. Uh, of course, we cannot forget, cannot forget our composer, Carlos Simon, our librettist, Sandra Seaton, our artistic team, uh, conductor and performance pianist, Donald Allen Lee III, our director, Camille Howard, and of course, our rehearsal pianist. Hey, Claire. What's going on? Hi, Disha, how are you? Good, how are you? And of course, our rehearsal piano is Ramsey Rice. So um, with that going forward, I'm flipping in between documents here. Um, I'm interested in asking a question to um, Miss Seaton here. Um, and also, Carlos um, and Camille, Please take a minute and elaborate on the importance uh, and significance of programming um, that is completely people of color, completely um, from artistic vision, um, leadership, writing and everything. I think a lot of times at opera, um, as people of color, we may see a couple of seats that are us, but we don't always see it in entirety. So please take a second and engage us with the significance of that sort of programming, because I think that's just a really big deal and, and we can't sit here and act like it's not. And, and I'd, I'd love to hear your take on it, your approach to it and how, how it impacted you in, in your role in the mounting of this production. Uh, oh yeah, Sandra, do you want to out or I'll go? Go ahead, Sandra. Are you, are you, uh, who would you like to speak about this? All of you, you can, you can take it away. You can take it away. Well, you know, when this was performed, you know, in the, in the original production is January, 2020. I, I remember, I remember before the, um, when it was still in the workshop phase, there were a lot of words. There was the setting, there was bringing that experience to 
um, folks that had, had never lived in that world before. And whereas to some, the, the idea of, you know, plants, just, you know, that's something that I've heard since I was very young, the whole idea of plants. And my mother had, um, she was the mother of the church and she had play daughters and, and play sons. And, and that, that world is familiar to me. Uh, the thing about pop calls, uh, 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 I think Carlos had, had asked Camille, said, hey, what's a pop call? And uh, that's something that's familiar to me. Uh, and it has to do with being ready at seven in the morning uh, in case somebody stops by and pops in to see you, the whole idea of pop calls. And not that any one of those things in itself in itself is, is important, but it's about bringing the integrity of the world to the audience and the fact that I was given the opportunity to bring in the specifics and the imagery from a world I was familiar with, it really fueled me and made me want to write this work even more, as opposed to someone saying, well, you don't put that in because nobody will get that, leave it out. But luckily, and happily, the people that I was working with originally, they didn't do that. And of course, I was pretty determined anyway <laughs> to, uh, you know, keep it, keep those uh, images. And, you know, it's just, I think it ends up being a win-win situation when you're allowed to speak your own truth and, 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 and give a portrait that ring, it rings true to you. And so I think it, it's very, very important. No matter, and this, this could be applied to a lot of different situations, a lot of different people, identity, gender, you know, the whole, the whole nine yards. Just piggybacking off of what Sandra was saying, I think it's just, there's a, um, it's a different experience when you have our, our artists who I sh have a shared identity of that culture, specifically with Black culture, um, uh, an understanding, like as Sandra was saying, like if there's a person who isn't from that culture and they're like, I don't know what that is, you know, why is it important to keep it in there? They might be inclined to cut things that they don't personally um, connect with or understand. But um, Ideally, when it, there's a creative team supporting a Black work that identifies as Black as well, there is um, a support in terms of like including all of those things that maybe the outside world isn't as familiar with because that's an opportunity for them to be enlightened about spe uh, that specificity. And also like in terms of interacting with the artists, you know, as the director, um, I'm, a, I'm able to uh, a, discuss or approach uh, certain sensitive subjects in a way where um, handling with care, but also with a fami uh, familiarity and understanding with artists, my black fellow black artists that we have a shared understanding of that experience with police brutality or racism or like the dangers of just leaving your house in general, you know, that, um, that somebody who isn't black, who is in a leadership position, wouldn't, ne might not necessarily relate to or understand. So they're coming at it from assumptions or from what they've gleaned from the media or stories. So um, the direction or the guidance might um, come across differently or with um, less um, authenticity or, um, so that's another benefit of the shared identity of the creative team. Um, and also just showing people who are new to classical, um, the classical industry that they are welcome. If you don't see yourself represented in all facets of uh, a creative piece, then how, you're going to feel like that's not for me. I'm not included in this. Like, and I'm, you know, it's just for those types of people. So it is so important 
to have that representation across the board or behind the table and um, on stage. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I probably could go on about it, but yes. <laughs> I love that. I may have neglected as well. Andre Chung is, is our artistic director and he's here too. You guys have to excuse me. It's a lot of spotlit little screens on my Zoom here. But Andre, do you have anything to add to this? No, I, you know, I want to reiterate everything that's been said so far. I mean, just allowing stakeholders um, to have a place at the table, to have a seat um, behind and front everywhere in terms of the creative process, in terms of the production process, and just um, showing that there are more stories out there and that authenticity of story really counts especially when it when it really um, you know is something that is uh, as divisive as race or ethnicity in terms of how we perceive it you know because you know perception is really all in the eyes of everyone's individual um, scope and so having stakeholders actually produce art that speaks to their experience it speaks to their their actual um, lived in moment is, is something I think is incredibly powerful. And it's something that, uh, you know, it's a long time coming really for um, the classical industry, especially opera. And it's, and I'm glad that we're able to, you know, produce as much as we can and give voice to these sort of, to these stories and just give people opportunities and really just make it, normalize it, normalize everything, just let it happen. And can I say something real quick? I think um, from the singer's perspective, it was really, cool to for the very first time present a character sing a role that could really be my real life experience i mean i could um i could be uncle wesley in my life i could be conchetta in my life like i could be a few different roles um and it, and it felt good to actually be able to tap into something that could be my real existence like I, i'm singing zarashro next and as much as i plan to become that high priest I will never like really be able to be Zarashko. So, you know, this, this, was, this was a cool experience. And also to kind of um, backtrack to what Camille was saying, um, I'm Jamie, I'm the general director. Having this conversation way back when with Andre about programming and what that would look like, being able to speak openly and speak openly like with our team about the concerns around programming this type of repertoire, how to do it correctly, and being able to have a diversity of perspectives and inputs in the room before we even started, right? Like all of that happening behind the scenes before we even added on, you know, our artistic staff and singers um, was a new experience for me as an administrator that I don't, you know, I, I, I don't have the opportunity to sit in a space where there are a lot of other folks who, bring such a wide variety of those experiences and perspectives to the table where we can speak openly about what we're missing and what you know we need for one another um, on both the administrative and performer end. Um, and can I say something just about the, the musical perspective <clears throat> of all of this? So, you know, I'm, a, I'm still a kind of new-ish to the opera conducting game. I've primarily been a solo pianist and all that good stuff since I was a kid. But you know, as a musician, it's like if I'm look, working on a Beethoven or Mendelssohn symphony or something like that, I use all of this background knowledge and historical stuff that I've read about over the years in order to formulate an interpretation. And, you know, after doing that for so many decades, it feels second nature. But then looking at a score like this, all hmm. of the, the decisions that I make, they just come from a natural place within me where there's not a question of, how should this go? How should it go? It goes the way that I know it should go because it's my culture. It's my people. I was raised by my grandparents. This sort of music, this sort of feel, this emotional content is something I've been, you know, living with my whole life. So all of a sudden, what I thought already felt natural to me, I've like discovered a new place of naturalness in being an artist working on this project. So it's just been an incredible experience to do it. I... I, I resonate with what you just said. Um, it goes back to the saying where you are the expert in your own life. Nobody can tell you about your life, you know, um, and nobody can tell you about your experience. And the beauty of a production like this is that um, all of our experiences have, have melded together, whether they be traumatic, um, whether they be joyful or um, communal, um, all of our experience somehow they, they, they web together, they weave together. So once again, I do want to say thank you. Um, 
it was it was very eye opening even for me to watch. Um, and it also, you know, painfully was mm, the more things change, the more they stay the same. It, it was one of those um, types of experiences. But to see it live through art was um, just really moving. And, and the fact that I guess this leads to my next question, and, and this is for Donald, um, Camille and Sandra primarily. How does it feel to see this somewhat immortalized online versus um, the live traditional stage? How is that for you? Is it was it was it easy to ebb and flow with, or was it an adjustment for you? Well, I think first I'd like to say that I wish you know right at the beginning, right in the title. Um, I hope the audience out there knew what a phenomenal thing this cast was doing. Because I wonder if people actually knew that we were not all in the same place early on. And I mean, really, you talked about it being challenging. Well, it's challenging, my goodness. I mean, it, you did an incredibly phenomenal job to be able to, to be in all these different places and pull this together. Um, so I just want to right away say, you know, it's, it's amazing that you were able to do this. Because I have seen things online where people are in different places and, and you have the little boxes and, uh, you know, you're switching from one box to another. It's pretty clear that, you know, I'm going back to my box and I'm going back to my box. So, um, and then, you know, bringing in the, the setting, uh, using the, uh, the videos in the back. Uh, and that wasn't done at, you know, at, at the Terrace Theater with uh, W, you know, we didn't have any uh, of the, of the, uh, of the visuals, you know. So you were able to bring in visuals. And so all of this speaks to what can happen online that doesn't happen when you're on the stage necessarily. Yeah. Uh, so I would say, you know, kudos, hats off to you all for being able to to pull this together the way you did. And, 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 and that's what I really noticed. You know, it's a, a cult, you know, opera, you think opera, you know, the stage. And so that is a traditional setting. But um, I don't think I've seen a online production that was, that came across so with such, kind of precision that you all were able to bring to it. I mean, it was pretty amazing, really. It was pretty amazing. So kudos to you for that. And thank you very much. And I'm so, uh, so delighted to be able to uh, be here with you and to, uh, to be, you know, to see what you were able, you know, phenomenal cast. Uh, all of you guys are just acclaimed and, um, very world class. Thank and, you. I would, and I would love to take a minute um, and give a round of our applause to our technical crew. Um, Brittany Jeffrey and Samantha Weiser, our co technical directors, Linda Manaba, our sound engineer, and Kaylee Donnie, our assistant sound engineer. They do incredible work. Um, I have been there, I sit behind the scenes. I still qu don't quite understand how they do it, but they, they make it all happen. Um, and they have just done such a phenomenal job. Um, and we really would, this company would not be what we are without them. So I am so, so grateful. Yeah, and thank you, Sandra, for your beautiful piece that you allowed us to work on. Cause that's, you know, without you, we wouldn't, we would have had nothing. So um, you and Carlos uh, and yeah, it, it, I will echo um, everything that everyone's been saying about, yes, there were, it was an interesting challenge for me as a director to navigate the physical aspects of the storytelling. 
Um, and that was what, was, um, um, what we had an um, interesting time exploring, uh, even just yesterday, trying to figure out how to convey certain elements of the um, physical tension while keeping everybody in frame and not like overlapping too much. Um, but we, I, I feel like we figured it out, but it was, that was one of the bigger challenges to make it not just park and bark to make it feel like it was that you, like you were getting the physical aspect of what was happening from moment to moment. And um, it was great that we were able to have props and like um, do interaction with the um, between the and the different cast members with those props and that was fun for us to explore like can you do this a little to the left a little more to the right like oh it looks like you're really grabbing it from each other so that was the, those were um, some of the discoveries we made in the room but also like we did um, it, it was great during our first rehearsal to spend like we spent the um, the whole time. Uh, discussing the dramaturgical aspects of the piece. We read through it all together as like the way you would a play um, and mind all of the nuances of the characters and their backstory and the scenario so that um, everything that the performers were give, giving um, to you on screen came from an authentic and familiar place. Uh, so um, I sort of lost track of what the question was. I think I was answering it. You got it. You got it. It was just about um, how was it seeing this and and really just moving your mind to seeing this online. And I I will piggyback. Somebody put in the chat. Let me let me wait a minute because it this really got me. Um, Taylor Mason loved the picnic basket transfer. That was masterful. It was because as soon as somebody said something about the screens in the back, I said it was the picnic basket for me. Okay. And it, it looked the same. And I was like, this was well thought out. Like that alone receives like an Academy Award. It was it was just um, those details, I think, that were that were definitely thought about. And those nuances that you talked about that really made me be like, ooh, even I didn't know that this was possible. You know, um, it just pushes the envelope. It pushes the envelope. And, and it's just great. Just great. Just great. <laughs> Thank you. And I, and I will say, I've, I've done a lot of Zoom stuff prior to this when we were in the pandemic times, but like despite all of the challenges that with the tech, this has been one of the easiest tech processes I've ever had since, um, including, yeah, out of all of the um, countless other Zoom techs I've done. And um, I do hope, I do love that we were, we did this on this platform, even though we're back to in-person things, because it um, invites people into the classical world who may feel like there's a barrier of entry with places where the price point is just out of um, range. And it also allows uh, people who aren't aren't in New York or aren't in, um, in Texas or in all the places where the big houses are to see classical work at a certain level. You know, like my parents in Indiana were watching, my aunt in New Jersey was watching. And you know, if, if this were in person, they wouldn't be able to experience it unless they paid for an expensive ticket and a plane and a hotel, all the things. So it, this, I'm, I'm hoping that this opens up um, more people to experiencing a classical work and seeing themselves on in these stories. Yes, and then like to answer the question about the difference between you know doing something like this on the stage and online. Um, as a conductor, keeping everybody together when I cannot see them, whew, when I tell you, <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost hard to describe the um, amount of nearly sleepless nights that I had trying to think about how to keep all of this together. But you know, we are humans and we adapt. And so it was just literally translating what would be physical gesture into, okay, what would it sound like to all of a sudden give a preparatory gesture? And so instead of adding a, you know, a flick of the hand, then I do a flick of the voice, one, two, three, four, you know, stuff like that. And eventually we all got on the same page, but somehow, you know, this incredible cast was just able to be so flexible and, you know, trust me that I was going to bring them in at the right spot, you know, when the track just has open air in it, so... Phew. I mean, if any of y'all have seen that Instagram challenge where it's like there's a beat going and then they take off that beat and you have to keep snapping and be right back on the beat, that mm -hmm. was like that for 20 minutes straight. So, <laughs> did you want to say something? I took you off. Oh, yeah. Okay. I love okay. it. Hi. Uh, 
I just wanted to hear from Olivia. I don't think I, I heard her sing, but I don't think I've heard her. I heard from Olivia. Um. Hi. Yeah, no, Hi, I spoke Olivia. a little bit in the beginning. It's very nice to meet you. Really great to meet you. Uh, thank you for this work. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for your gorgeous voice. I did, I did um, text. I couldn't get him on, but I did text George Shirley and I said, hey, your student is going to be singing. Aww. And so I, I hope he had a chance to uh, listen to you. Yeah, I, I, I let him know and I, I made sure that he knew. So I, I believe he did. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really great to uh, hear you take that trip and to, you know, to get ready and to do something that you've been dreaming about doing and then to arrive at your destination. You brought so much energy and beauty to it. Oh, Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Well, I, I love Conchetta because <laughs> I was Conchetta <laughs> and I had that stage of innocence and beauty where I wasn't aware of who I was in this world in perspective to other people. Mm -hmm. um, and then having to become aware of myself as a black woman and that transition and that change. Um, so I, and I also am originally from the South, North Carolina and my family's originally from Chicago. So all of the language, all of the love, all of the joy, all of the story telling that you brought, I understood and I really appreciated that. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I also, also um, just a shout out to, um, to Uncle, Uncle Matt too. Uh, thank you so much for, for what you brought to that. Oh, of course. It was my pleasure. It's always a pleasure to play somebody. It's, it's always a pleasure to play any character who I can can, can really connect with. And um, I have a niece uh, and who I love very much. I have a nephew who is a new nephew in my life. Um, mm -hmm. And I just realized that like, yep, we're going to have to have the, the important part of the important part of all of this is I I just love that I can connect to this piece. I can connect to my nephew. I connect to um, trying to be the protector of, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of him. So mm -hmm. that's all. And Uncle Wes. Yeah. Thank you, Uncle Wes. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, I really did want, I wanted, um, I had written, you know, this could be easily an hour. There are much bigger parts for the, gas station attendant and uh, and the cop and 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 the cop actually uh, has these interchanges because they they've all been in the war so that that's not here but uh, but then then the gas station attendant goes back and he's he doesn't know how to get out of the world that you know the his sons of the Confederacy world. I mean, he's kind of locked in there, but still it gets developed more so. Um, uh, just who we are as human beings, you know? So, you know, we're, we're never just stick figures now, uh, which is, I think, very important to portray the, the whole, full humanity of, of individuals, even though you might not like them but that's not the point you know you want to have them have everyone you write about be complicated so uh, that would be if this were to be expanded that would be something that would be important to me are there uh, any questions in the audience um, that you may have feel free to come off mic and ask aloud I think there's a couple in the chat. Calabria, if you want to. OK, I'll start from the most recent one, too. Taylor Mason says, on that note of this being written as an hour long piece, I love the accessibility of this format. The obvious question is about your plans for the future. Live performances, cast meetups, continuing online performances. Those are all question mark questions. Separate. Um, 
Nice. Yeah, I guess I can kind of take this one. Um, so definitely for the rest of this season, um, we're continuing in this online format. That's how, um, you know, our organization came to be, which is what started as a pandemic um, project with that level of accessibility um, in mind. As a singer myself, I love this idea of you know, you may not be in an area where you readily have like a lot of performance opportunities and the ability to connect with so many wonderful, you know, artists, um, directors and conductors. And the fact that we are so unique and that we're able to do that, um, as well as from an audience perspective, you know, I'm sitting right here um, at home with my cats uh, and I was able to enjoy such a wonderful performance and I didn't have to go anywhere or worry about the travel and the expenses. Um, and so I, I really think, you know, for us being next gen, right, and that that being so ingrained in our mission, um, that we continue with uh, this format at least for now until we see, you know, what what the future holds. And Andre, I don't know if you want to, you have anything to add to that, but um, you know, uh, just reiterating again what Jamie said. Um access was really important to us and so we we provided uh, a lot of technology we provide uh, a lot of the know-how and um, just making sure that everyone has a chance to potentially put on something that is cohesive and interesting and has a wide berth for a, it was a big um, aspect of our company coming forward um, in terms of cast meetups, I mean, I'm sure they could all meet up at some point in the future. I mean, you know, the uh, luckily the world's opening back up, so you know, I'm sure there will be there's a, there's going to be a time where everyone's in New York or Chicago or somewhere. Um, and yeah, as Jamie said, you know, the future is always up in the air, but that you know, there's always going to be a really strong component of technology within what we do at Opera Next Gen. My tree had a question in the chat. She is our development director and says this work communicates so much in 20 minutes what was it like to develop these characters and or relationships i have to say that i had to make sure that i was not uh bringing too much william into uncle wesley i had to make sure that i was allowing him to be who he was going to be and not really getting mixed up with what William would do. Um, <clears throat> and Camille would tell you in that first day when we were kind of fleshing out the characters and who they were and a little bit about their story, I was trying to make him this like, I was just trying to make him too much like me. And it just was not going for um, the direction that we were going in the story. So it did take some time to kind of like figure out who he was gonna be, what story he was trying to tell um and what message he was trying to convey like not only to conchetta but to like everybody watching him so that that was definitely a thing for trying to develop um uncle wesley yeah i'm like we were well william you can correct me if i'm wrong but you were putting your 2021 sensibility on a character who's in 1958 so that was where we had to like judge things to think like well in 1958 the circumstances were these the stakes were these and like so <laughs> yeah so um we spent some time doing research we were like what kind of car are they driving okay they probably wouldn't want to have um and they wouldn't have a newer car probably because of like society circumstances but also you didn't want to have something that stood out and got you arrested or like like assault you know or um um bothered by the police and we knowing the circumstances of how like back in that time having worked on other projects where they say where black people would ha sometimes have like a chauffeur hat in the car so that if they got pulled over, they could put on the chauffeur hat and say like, oh, this is my boss's car and we're driving it there. And she, and my wife is the maid and my daughter, you know, so that they could, because black people showing wealth would, um, could lead to antagonism. So we did that sort of dramaturgical work and decided like what kind of car they were driving, where, where were they going from Chicago through Indiana, Kentucky and Tennessee and like, um, you know, how would Conchetta dress, you know, what were they, like, what was her sensibility having grown up in the South, but like moving to, to Chicago um, and not liking it. Um, and what was 
P what is PTSD like post World War II? Like we wanted to make sure that we were being respectful and approaching that, you know, um, you know, having that detail of the Confederate flag bandana for the gas station attendant, which is like a marker of where what where his po politics lie um and like where he is on the class system and we wanted to really try to make sure that the gas station attendant didn't come across as a caricature because then that allows audience members to distance themselves like white audiences to be like oh well i'm not as bad as that guy you know and so and we wanted to make sure that there was accountability and complicity in the story so um, that was something that we talked about um and like where does the policeman lie in terms of his views and you know um uh yeah all that stuff <laughs> well just to um sort of begin to close us out um thank you all so much um thank you everyone for coming first of all and then thank you to all of our artistic team all of our wonderful performers um just I'm blown away. I'm blown away. And I'm sure that I share a similar sentiment with those of us who came and those of us, again, who are still sitting here. Um, we do have a few very um, quick announcements for you. If you like this, we want to see you back in March for our performance of Orfeo. Um, also, we also have monthly webinars that happen regu regularly coming back in January. We um, will be speaking on ableism in opera, which should be a very enlightening and also informative um, conversation. And we'd love for you to join. One way to learn about everything that's going on is just by getting on our email list, um, which is operanextgen.org. And the pop-up will pop up right in front of you for your information. Um, we want to make it very clear that we prioritize artists in Opera Next Gen, and we are always accepting donations. Uh, I will drop the link in the chat. If you feel so moved to donate, we appreciate you. Um, and thank you so much for your support. Um, finally, we are raffling away hand painted artwork for the show. The tickets are $5. Um, this raffle, again, can also be found um, on our website, operanextgen.org. Everything is on the website, essentially. And if that is it, is that the benediction? Once again, thank you everyone for coming. Um, this was a wonderful experience and we hope to see you again soon. We hope to hear from you again soon and please take care and be safe. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ciao.